Well, hey guys, I am here at Costco, the club. It has been a while since I have been here and I thought it would be fun to do a shop with me because it's that time of year where they tend to get in a lot of new sunscreens and stuff for summer in terms of skincare. <laughs> Olay Vitamin C Peptide 24 Serum. $46.49 for these two bottles. That seems pretty steep, but y'all know, <laughs> Olay is always a little on the pricey side in my opinion. Lactic acid is the alpha hydroxy acid in this. Lactic acid can help soften and hydrate the skin and gently exfoliate, improving the look of hyperpigmentation. The vitamin C in this is 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid. It's an antioxidant, but it doesn't have the research behind it in terms of improving collagen synthesis and smoothing out wrinkles. It may help in improving like hyperpigmentation or minimizing hyperpigmentation. This also has niacinamide, which is another good ingredient for hyperpigmentation. It does have fragrance, which um, can be irritating, and some fragrance compounds can lead to dilation of the blood vessels, which actually can worsen some forms of hyperpigmentation, namely melasma. But yeah, you have that. Glycerin is a humectin, will help hydro pull water into the top layers of the skin along with that lactic acid. The dimethicone will kind of help seal everything in. That radiance technology. Palmetto oil pe pentapeptide. You know, that can help with moisture retention. Palmetto oil peptides, they, they can help with skin hydration. This also has tocopherol, which is an antioxidant as well. <clears throat> Trehalose is also a humectant. Um, yeah, the thing about this, the purpose of it is like, you know, put it on in the morning, then apply sunscreen on over it, and the antioxidants may help along with your sunscreen reducing oxidative stress upon exposure to UV, visible light, infrared radiation, and pollution, all those things lead to the formation of free radicals in the skin that ultimately contribute to skin aging. Oh boy, we've got a liquid collagen supplement here with a whole bunch of other stuff. Now, there are some studies, they've got their limitations, but there are some studies on dietary collagen, either from marine sources, some of them are bovine sources, but there are actually some studies that show that dietary collagen supplements, the hydrolyzed collagen, peptides do get into the skin, believe it or not, from the digestive tract. There actually is a study that suggests it can, in fact, localize to the skin. Side effects include GI upset, and if you have allergies to fish, be careful because some of the collagens are fish-derived. Anyways, so the study suggests that it can't, taking dietary collagen can improve skin hydration and smooth out wrinkles. They're limited, the studies that we have. What else does this have? Biotin. Taking high doses of biotin can interfere with the accuracy of certain blood tests. So make sure you stop taking biotin supplements a week before you're gonna have labs done. An antioxidant blend, which is basically tea and juice. Um, and a horsetail extract. Not sure what the benefit is there. Oh, a natural source of silica. Mm, not so sure that dietary silica silica supplements. I think there is some soft research to support that that may help with nail strength, but again, that's probably an industry study. Here we have a turmeric supplement. Now, turmeric is anti-inflammatory. It has poor bioavailability, so if you consume turmeric foods and you want that anti-inflammatory benefit, I believe you need to consume it with like pepper. There are a few other compounds that I also I'm under the impression enhanced turmeric's bioabsorption. But one thing with the supplements that you have to be careful about is they can make you at greater risk of bleeding. So if you're going to have surgery or you're going to get a minimally invasive procedure like even Botox or filler, that increase in, in bleeding may make you more prone to bruising. So just disclose with the provider or your doc and or your doctor that you are taking supplement, something like that. Here's another turmeric supplement here. 1,500 milligrams, two capsules daily. And these things also may interfere with like other medications that you may be taking that can thin the blood. So just be careful. Just because it's a dietary natural supplement or whatever it doesn't necessarily mean that it is. It does without potential side effects. 
Ew, but I'm not gonna lie, turmeric gummies sound tasty. <laughs> here we are with Olay body wash here. Are they trying to compete with Dove? Remember Dove was always about their one quart of moisturizer. That was like their selling point. Now they've switched over to deep moisture and I see Olay is stepping on in, now adding a percentage, 20% more moisturizers. Anyways, all that to say, Olay body washes are pretty nice. They're like a liquid sindent. They have a lot of moisturizing ingredients added. Now, I've said this in other videos before, but you don't necessarily need to be using body wash from head to toe all the time, especially on the legs and the arms. But in the armpits, the groin area, definitely helpful. Here we have the Dove Sensitive Skin, hypoallergenic. That term doesn't mean a whole lot because it can still have common skin allergens. And you can become allergic to anything. So for example, what does this actually have in it? $15.93 here for these three, this three pack. Yeah, I mean, fragrance is a common allergen. So if you're allergic to that, I mean, then you'd have to avoid this. So the hypoallergenic claim is whatever. Sodium lauryl isothionate, that is a mild surfactant. Some people are allergic to cocomidal purple betaine. It's a secondary surfactant, quite mild, frequently in tear-free shampoos. Ooh, it looks like Kirkland's got its own bar soap. Is this ascendant or like a true bar soap that that's, that's important because Sindant bars like Dove, ooh, this is a good one by the way, the Dove Fragrance Free Beauty Bar, um, they are very mild, but like bar bar soaps, like Ivory, Dial, the pH is on the harsh side for your skin barrier, It'd be very drying and irritating. Plus, they tend to, they can cause issue if you live somewhere with hard water in particular. So I suggest a Sindent like Beauty Bar or whatever, much milder for body and face cleansing. This bar, by the way, you can use as a face, you know, to wash your face too. The Neutrogena Rain Bath. I've used this before, it's okay. What is that, a fig? It smell like fig? $15.89 for these two original scent. Or no, just one. That seems pretty steep. $15.89 for this one thing of body wash. Sodium Lorith Sulfate. Red dyes. Now DMBM Hydantoin, that's a preservative. It gets fear-mongered unnecessarily, especially in hair care products. Uh, it's a preservative, you know, you can become allergic to it, but otherwise it's fine. And there's no documentation of it causing hair loss when used in shampoos. I have a video on that, like that Tresemme lawsuit. Looks like we've got a four pack of Dove antiperspirant with fragrance. Make sure you're putting your antiperspirant on at nighttime. Works better that way. And if you find that antiperspirants lead to skin irritation, put them on at nighttime. And then when you wake up in the morning, take a washcloth and wipe the skin because the antiperspirant, the aluminum salt, by the following morning, it should have trickled down into the eccrine sweat gland and done its thing. Anything left on the surface of the skin is you know, more likely to be irritating. So you can just wipe it off at that point. But you know, this got, has fragrance in it, which helps to mask body odor. But body odor comes from the breakdown of sweat by the bacteria on the surface of your skin and putting fragrance under the armpit, which is what the purpose of a lot of natural deodorants is how they work. It just kind of masks that, but sometimes it can actually make body odor worse. Here we have a cucumber and green tea. Is this an antiperspirant? Ooh, scratch and sniff. Mmm, Bath and Body Works, 1995, anyone? With the cucumber melon, green tea, like that has a smell, come on. Cucumber melon, that's what we're getting here. Um, is this actually an antiperspirant? Nope, it's not. So this is a deodorant. It's basically a perfume and a stick. And, uh, yeah. $13.99. Here's Gillette's antiperspirant. $15.99 for this five pack, six in one. Man, like, wh what is the six in one here? <laughs> this is male demographic marketing to the T. They're always trying to rope men in with like 
the multi-purpose product. But honestly, what what are the five other things that we're looking for? Like, I guess reduce sweat and not smell bad. But like, what else? What what are the other needs that are being met here? Anti-white mark, 72 hour, but I'm totally confused, Gillette. You're just throwing numbers at me, <laughs> left and right. Not skincare related, but a PSA for all of my ENTs out there. Do not put Q-tips in your ears. Just shoving the wax down further, cause damage to your ears and your hearing. Don't put anything in your ear smaller than your elbow. I think that shoving these into your ear actually causes your ear to produce more wax too. Ooh, this is a good deal. The Tweezer Man. $19.79 brow tweezer set. Okay, make sure you lay down your yeah, lay down your tweezers. Go watch that video I did on the thin brow trend because you definitely can overpluck your brows and get a scarring alopecia. I don't know what it is about brow hairs that they're a lot more sensitive to to the tweezing, but yeah, cuz the thin brow thing will will die out as far as a trend. Anyways, all that to say, these are good tweezers. I have to tweeze in between my brows and those bad boys, for whatever reason, never scar down. Oh, Patera, Patera, Patera. $199.99 for some humectants and water. This product I've tried before. I was not, I personally, just my experience using it, I did not notice any miraculous changes. Um, I happen to think that the Misha Time Revolution First Treatment Essence is equally hydrating and a great alternative to this, much more affordable. I don't know, is it just me? Is this still as popular as it once was? I feel like once you get, once people get into skincare, they realize that this type of product is kind of a dime a dozen, but then they're like the cult oh, following. We've got the, looks like over here we have the Olay Vitamin C Peptide 24 product in a cream. That's what Olay does. They always, any product that they come out with, they, they vary the consistencies of the, more or less the same product. Like they'll do the serum and then they'll do the cream in the pot. This one, Costco's making it hard to find out the price point here. Like that serum, this is at 3-O-Ethyl. Uh, it has the same peptide, it has fragrance, it has niacinamide, it has lactic acid, it has trehalose. Uh, yeah, this is just going to be a thicker consistency. Whatever floats your boat. $46.49 for that one. Then we've got their Retinol 24. This is a good option for a Retinol. It also has peptides in it. Now, this particular one, I think, has fragrance, but they've got one of these that is free of fragrance. In addition to retinol, this also has a retinyl ester, retinyl propionate. Uh, be careful, I mean, not be careful, but just be aware that ret uh, retinyl esters, they don't, they don't have the same outcomes that people are seeking when they're looking for a retinol. They're just antioxidants. They're not bad ingredients, but like I feel like brands will kind of pull the wool over your eyes if you're not aware of that retinol esters just act as antioxidants. They don't like boost collagen production or anything like that. Now retinol does, so this product has retinol. Anyways, again, DMDM, Hydantoin, iodopropyl butyl carbamate, those are the preservatives. Some people can become allergic to those, but otherwise they are fine and they help this product be something that can be in a jar and not get contaminated. People have kind of stopped asking, oh, it is fragrance free. People have kind of stopped asking, is jar packaging safe? It is. Um, you know, the uh, early days, there was a lot of fear mongering around that. But I've tried this micro sculpting cream before. It is not too bad. This one has fragrance, but they do make one that is free of fragrance. And you guys who are new here, I personally prefer to avoid fragrance and leave on products. It can be irritating and it doesn't really serve a purpose and I don't buy into the whole fragrance makes something like a better experience because some of the top selling skincare products smell wretched, either like hot dogs or embalming fluid. So clearly being, being a product that smells bad does not keep people from buying it. What is this Olay Whips? SPF 30. 
This is probably gonna be a chemical sunscreen. Yep. So shouldn't leave a cast. Should not leave a cast. It does have fragrance. It also is niacinamide. It's an antioxidant. 4649. Oh, what is this Nia? This is by Strivectin. Their products are like, whatever, overpriced. Chemical sunscreen. I'm not dropping 20 bucks on this little pot of sunscreen. That being said, I do drop 20 bucks or more on the Neutrogena Hydro Boost gel cream that I like so much. But that one I find worth it. It lasts a long time. Whereas this is a sunscreen. You're gonna be using a large quantity of it to get good protection you're gonna burn through that very quickly so to me personally it would not be worth the price plus like i said i like to avoid fragrance in products that are left on the skin what is this plump and lift sagging skin along jawline and poorly stop lying it's not going to do that stop lying strivectin you get sagging along the jawline as part of age-related change here because you start to lose uh, some, you start to get bony resorption along the mandible, coupled with descent of volume in the mid-face downwards. And you also have, obviously, loss of collagen. You get some weakening of the underlying ligaments. No cream is going to address all of those factors. I mean, so just stop lying right there. What does this have? It's a scented moisturizer. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't even know. Shea butter, that's a good moisturizing ingredient. So $69.99, 70 dollars. So you're gonna spend $35 for this. Just call it, yeah. It, it, if you do decide to plunk that much money down, I guarantee it's not actually going to sculpt your face. Like this is very misleading. Oh, Mrs. Myers, why are you over here in the Oh, it's a hand soap. I thought it was those sprays. That's actually a pretty good deal. $15.99 for the four hand soaps. I like their hand soaps. I've used them before. They're not like overly drying or anything. The, but I will warn you in terms of Costco hand soaps, I bought the, there used to be a dial hand soap pack here. I'm sure they still have it somewhere. Super drying, made my nails dry too. I don't recommend the dial. It's like a pump. You know, it's liquid in the bottle, but when you pump it out, it's like this big foamy ball of soap. Yeah. Over here, we've got some shampoos and conditioners. What is Super Nature? Super Nature. They must have their sunscreen somewhere else. I'm not seeing a single sunscreen other than that ripoff from Olay and the ripoff from Strivectin. Pantene, $10.99. There we go with the five in one, like five in one conditioner. What are the what are the other features? Lightweight, oh, it's too much. And then a five in one shampoo. $10.99. Ah, uh -huh. we have some sunscreen sprays over here. We have the Neutrogena Ultra Sheer Dry Touch. This does have fragrance in it and it burns around the eyes. Although honestly, I haven't tried it since they removed oxybenzone. I always found that that was the ingredient that for me personally was most irritating in chemical sunscreens. They removed that. It's a UVB filter. Um, so I wonder how the newer formulation stacks up. This is a good sunscreen otherwise, if you can tolerate the burning around your eyes. Then we have a copper tone spray. This is a chemical sunscreen. You, when you spray chemical sunscreens, make sure that you're not like somewhere where it's super windy because most of the sunscreen will end up in the air and not on your skin. Do multiple passes and then rub it in. Unfortunately, the coverage that you get with sprays is less reliable than like a cream or lotion. Then we've got Aldo Botanica over there. $17.99. I know that one likewise has fragrance in it. This is my favorite retinol and now Costco has the fragrance free version of the regenerating cream. Seriously, this is honestly one of the best retinols in my opinion on the market. The cream itself, the, the vehicle that the retinol is in is so moisturizing. It almost has like an instant skin plumping and hydrating and wrinkle smoothing effect just from the vehicle alone. Then with continued use, the retinol can help in fading discoloration and improving the look of fine lines. Um, and Neutrogena is a company that 
is a Johnson & Johnson brand. They have a lot of patents on retinols and they have a large body of R&D behind their retinol. So they're very trustworthy in that regard. All right, UV protection for your eyeballs, very important for obviously the skin around your eyes, you know, reducing the risk of skin cancers, which do develop on the, around the eyes and crow's feet and all that. So sunglasses, super important. Also important for protecting your eyeball proper. Costco has these, which I actually really like. $60, not too bad. When it comes to buying sunglasses, just make sure it says 100% UV protection. Now, ideally, the more coverage you have on the sides, the better, because that protects you from UV rays coming in the sides, like these Puma ones, which I su definitely suggest this kind of style if you're gonna be out like on a boat doing water sports where you have a lot of UV or you're like, into golfing and stuff when you're out in the sun a lot. The Kirkland Rock and Frames here, 100% UV, reduces eye fatigue and long-term sun damage, $24.99. Not a bad price sickle. Looks like Costco got in skincare pillowcases made out of mulberry silk, which can be quite smooth on the skin, reduce friction. That could lead to skin irritation. Also, it doesn't absorb oils as much from your skin. I use one of these, I, I really like it. Not this brand, but it helps a lot. It also cuts down on hair breakage and frizz. Well guys, Costco had some good stuff, but I was disappointed they didn't have like all of their sunscreens in stock. Usually they get them all in around this time of year and they really didn't have much beyond their kind of baseline stock. But anyways, I hope this video was helpful to you all. Consider subscribing if you like skincare content and you're new here. Hit the bell notification if you want to know when my videos go live. And if you like short form content, consider following me over on TikTok or Instagram. I'm pretty consistent over there. There's a lot of myths on TikTok that I bust, so definitely don't miss out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.